Hey guys, it's Trisha Carr. I have new exciting things going on with my Mystic Arts Academy. You can now subscribe to receive all of the live monthly content for about a third of the investment of a single class. Included are at least one downloadable guided meditation per month, two live events ranging from classes, channeled messages, group readings, intuitive development guidance, Q&A sessions, and tons of community. You'll also have access to a private Facebook community for fellowship and support, and this space is kept super sacred and high vibrational. Your subscription gives you access to the whole library of classes and live events, which are on a vast array of topics. All events are offered online by Zoom video call, and many are also offered live in person at my studio here in Los Angeles. Subscribing to the Mystic Arts Academy is also a way for you to support the Charmed Life podcast and engage on a deeper level. I'm offering the subscription at a super low rate of $22 a month. Joining now locks in this rate for as long as you're subscribed. Click on the description of this episode or go to my website, trishacarcharm.com, and click on Mystic Arts Academy. I look forward to connecting. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this mini episode of Charmed Life. I am Trisha Carr, and this is phase 13, the 13th day in our 29 days of lunar phase. We are still in the gibbous moon energy, the waxing gibbous. Waxing means to expand and to grow. Gibbous means bulge. We will enter into the full moon phase about two days from now. Wait, where am I? Yeah, about two days from now. But that's just sort of the beginning. The actual full moon will be straight up in about four or five days. If I mean, if you're watching this and you're on the journey with us as we go, This is actually Friday. We'll kind of start to enter the phase of full moon on Sunday, and then the full moon at 100% will be on Tuesday. But the actual phases sort of bridge about three, three and a half days. And so we are in this phase of the gibbous moon, the waxing gibbous, the expanding gibbous being more than 50% of the illumined moon. More than 50% of it is showing its surface, she is showing her illumination to the earth, and that means you too. Your connection to the moon means that you are receiving the energy from source. You are acting on your intentions, honing your intentions, and approaching the time to reap, the time of harvest, which is the time of the full moon. And how to continue to better prepare as we're still in the energy of creating. We still are in the potential energy. We are still in the Um, adjusting the intentions and acting upon the intentions this is a good time in order to prepare to be in forgiveness mode yesterday in yesterday's phase we talked about releasing and forgiveness is a way to prepare for your harvest forgiveness is an energy to allow into your field as a way to release and as a way to better prepare for your harvest. Not only prepare for your harvest, but to do the last bit of tending to the crops as you would to foster the manifestation. So the manifestation is still in the creation process. And so this phase, this day, the energy of the moon to connect with today is forgiveness first then manifestation. This is what spirit gave me about the energy today. And so let's look at the energy of forgiveness. Now forgiveness could be for another person. And even if there is forgiveness, let's say there is some kind of abuse or wrong that you experienced in a relationship with another. And there is always a truth to that. And on on the perspective of this dimension of 3D, if you've been betrayed or harmed or abused or in some way not treated fairly or appropriately by another, that is the truth. And if that is not occurring in this exact moment, then the healthiest thing for you to do for yourself is to find the energy of forgiveness. Because forgiveness isn't about releasing another. It's about releasing yourself from the energy entanglement of that which is perceived as incorrect or wrong. And essentially, the incorrect or wrong energy is the recognition of 
fear, lack, separation, and in, in a manner of speaking, death or the opposite of creation. And so if we are to be in the manifestation energy, we want to enhance the creation energy, the manifestation, the positive, the affirming energy. Now, dematerialization is a pro part of the process of materialization. So demanifesting is a part of manifesting. But as it's concerned, when we're, we're talking about having our energy arrested in that kind of dematerialization or death energy, the reason that it is arrested and incongruent is because we want that energy to be in the positive manifesting energy. As it concerns dematerialization, we, we really are allowing dematerialization to happen. And that's what we would do in the forgiveness process. We allow ourselves to be disconnected from the energy that is arresting it, that is meant to be directed to the creation or the manifestation energy. And so if in your relating with another, if there is a wrongdoing that you have witnessed and experienced, forgiving them will set you free of the continued experience of being done wrong in that energy. So it doesn't mean that you condone the energy. It doesn't mean that you condone the actions of another when they did something that was out of alignment. It means that you free yourself from the continued experience of it. Because if you ha are holding unforgiveness about some kind of wrongdoing, and it's really happening in your mind. You are experiencing that wrongdoing over and over in your imaginal, in your energy space. And that isn't serving you and it isn't serving anyone. It isn't punishing the other person either. It isn't keeping them from doing that to you or to another either. It isn't re really truly reminding you to not be engaged with them by you r keeping that unforgiveness, by withholding forgiveness from them. You know to not allow that anymore. And so it really doesn't do serve you in any way. And it will arrest your creator energy. It will create. It will arrest your I am energy, because the I am energy now is in the energy of I am a victim, I am one who has suffered an abuse or a wrongdoing, and that's not the energy that is going to move toward your higher good and your manifestation. Now, another person to forgive, so that you can forgive first and then manifest, is yourself. In the process of manifestation, we can be in the recognition that we have failed, in air quotes, for those of you who are listening and not watching, that we have failed to manifest in the past. This is an energy that we are all holding, I think, probably all the time, our recognition of not having manifested in the way that we had envisioned, in the way that we had hoped, or perhaps in the way that we had demanded ourselves in a way that was kind of separation oriented, you know, to be a brow beater upon ourselves, the, the, the bad boss of ourselves, the teacher who would wrap you on the knuckles with a ruler and say, you're not doing it right. That that person, we all have that person in that, that, that um, character in our mind. Forgiving ourselves for not having perfectly manifested in the past. And when we're doing that, when we are blaming ourselves and we have unforgiveness for ourselves, we're actually outside of the co-creative energy. You know, we never create on an island. That's what I call going rogue. Leaving the system that is the system of the universe, the system that is the creator energy, the I am energy. When we blame ourselves, when we have, we are not, we haven't forgiven ourselves for not perfectly manifesting in the past, we are effectively departing from the energy that does manifest because we don't manifest on our own. And so in that experience of withholding forgiveness from ourselves, it actually is, is we might be aware of it, consciously aware of it in, in this moment, but it usually requires some introspection. It usually requires some summoning it up from the unconscious and asking ourselves, do I forgive myself? Do I accept myself? The energy of forgiveness, Spirit was telling me, is as, as we have crafted the word, is very telling. The word for, we've, it's actually derived from German, but how we have, as English speakers, dialed in this frequency of this word forgive is very telling of the subconscious energy to it and how it helps us. So the part of the word that is for, for means in advance, the beginning. 
It means like to forecast. And then give is the energy of giving, right? And the energy of giving is the op is the other side of the coin of receiving. In order to, in advance, we give. And that's how the title of this comes out. That is the subconscious language that is happening, the energy that's happening with for giving. First, we give, and then we're able to receive. We fully and completely activate the energy of giving by giving to ourselves the wholeness that is our higher truth, the wholeness that we by birthright deserve. And then we are in the energy of also receiving because these two energies are inseparable, the giving and the receiving. The universe is able to give to you if you give to yourself first. Be the, be the entire, be the absolute frequency of giving by forgiving yourself. Recognizing that you don't create in a bubble and so you aren't the one who is the singular person who did not manifest appropriately. And then you can relax, become very present. That is what forgiveness allows you to do. To release unforgiveness frees up life force energy to be able to be directed then to your manifestation energy. So if it is forgiveness for another or forgiveness for yourself, you free up that arrested energy and then it naturally flows more efficiently and appropriately, your clarity of your mind, of your emotions, of how to take actions, of what your intentions truly are, those divine intentions. When we release unforgiveness, then that life force energy is freed up to move directly into that area of manifestation. Freeing ourselves from the unforgiveness, forgiving ourselves, actually releases any inflammation. And that means in the body, as well as in the mental and the emotional bodies. If you have inflammation in the mental and emotional bodies, this basically means your attention will be misdirected. If you have inflammation in your body, for example, example for how this works with the mental and emotional, but for literal truth as well, inflammation in the body then will take the blood flow and the nutrients from the whole system and there will be lack that the you will be out of balance and so the attention goes to one area to try and heal it the blood flow literally goes to that area and then you'll get some other misalignment some other pain or discomfort which could be in a myriad places in your body i had some inflammation what because I, my diet was off because i have a reaction to i have an intolerance to really all grain but especially the wheat and the corn and that's probably because the GMOs that are now used in the process of growing those products make it inedible for, completely inedible for beings. <laughs> you know, let's, let's just face it. And so I was, I'm highly intolerant of that. And then grain in general doesn't seem to align for me. And not knowing that and continuing to eat that and not giving myself the service for giving myself of that habit, I had rampant inflammation that was causing all kinds of issues. I was going to the emergency room because I was running a high fever and having extreme pain in my gut. And they thought that I was septic or that I had uh, app an appendicitis, but what is that? Uh, uh, I'm forget. Oh, pancreatitis. Yeah, pancreatitis. And they thought, you know, something terrible was going on because I had the high fever, which indicates, in, you know, in uh, infection. And so because I had inflammation in my body, that was occurring. And then I had like um, inflamed wisdom teeth that they were saying had to come out after I changed my diet. They no longer have to come out. They're like, no, they're fine. Just leave them. And then I also had like these uh, pinched nerves happening in different parts of my, my shoulder and back. And, you know, it was all of these things that were happening, different kinds of viral flare ups that were that were occurring. All of that stuff went away when I reduced the inflammation in my body. In this particular example, it happened by changing a behavior and changing how what I was consuming. In this case, consuming something that was contrary to my true energy. And so forgiveness 
uh, or I should say unforgiveness, holding some kind of blame for yourself or for another is like ingesting something that is not good for you. It is bringing it into your energy. And so it creates an inflammation in your mental and emotional body and the life force energy akin to the blood, akin to the nutrients, akin to the, uh, the anti-inflammatory, the, the, the um, balancing hormones and everything have to go to that area to try to make it right and can't go to the thing that you are aligned to create. So forgiveness brings you present with the whole. You are giving yourself the orientation, the higher truth, the awareness of wholeness. You could even say holiness as you align with the one I am energy, which is the energy that creates. And the way you get to the one I am energy that creates is by your own I am energy. And then you are in alignment and your manifestation is certain. That's it for this phase 13, moving into our manifesting full moon cycle. I'll check in with you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Hey everyone, it's Trisha Carr. I'm really excited because it is the time of the year for me to offer my Animal Communication Comprehensive Program live online. Whether you are interested in the profession or if you would like to connect more deeply with your own animal family members, having an understanding of this form of telepathy will enhance your life and all of your other intuitive gifts. About once per year, I offer this program live, and that time is now. It is starting in December of 2019, and this particular live program has some bonus time added in. So the way this program works is it is delivered live online, and we also have a private study group of a beautiful community of like-hearted animal and nature lovers. Go ahead and check it out. The link is in the description, and I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for your love of animals, for your love of our planet, and for shining your light on our beautiful world.